All right, let me move along. Marx. A couple of years back, they took a poll in England. They asked people, who is the most influential thinker of the last thousand years? Not the last ten or the last hundred, the last thousand years. The runaway winner by streets. Karl Marx. I'm sure you all know a good deal about Karl Marx. Let me just recall what Friedrich Engels said at Marx's graveside at his funeral. Just as Darwin discovered the laws of development of organic nature, so Marx discovered the law of the development of human history. The simple fact hitherto concealed by an outgrowth of ideology that mankind must first of all eat, drink, have shelter and clothing before it can pursue politics, science, art, religion, etc. That therefore the production of the immediate material means and consequently the degree of economic development attained by a given people or during a given epoch form the foundation upon which the state institutions, the legal conceptions, art and even religion of the people concerned have been evolved, evolved and in the light of which they must therefore be explained instead of vice versa as has hitherto been the case. Now, I don't know if you made sense of that somewhat labyrinthine passage, but the basic idea is very simple. You've all heard it. The material forces of history determine everything else, including art, politics, law, religion, and all the rest of it. Religion is the opium of the people. It's an instrument of class struggle. Uh, it is a sign of man's alienation and his ignorance from his true self. Marx is a humanist as well as being a child of the Enlightenment in many other ways. The belief in progress, the belief in science, the belief in the perfectibility of man. There is one terribly dangerous idea lurking in Marx's scenario, and that is utopianism. The idea that all of the wrongs of the world, all of the injustice, all of the oppressions, the crime, the suffering, is all the result of faulty social organisation and of class struggle. And that if we could eliminate the causes of class struggle, namely private property, we could organise a world in which everyone got a fair shake, everyone got a fair amount of the cake, so to speak. And as Marx said, we could fish in the morning, hunt in the afternoon, raise cattle in the evening and philosophise in the night time. A charming prospect, is it not, ladies and gentlemen? A charming prospect. And in a way we might wish that it could be true, but of course we know better. Wherein lies the danger? Once men's minds are gripped by the idea that a perfect world is possible, then almost anything can be justified. If you seriously believe that if we just need to reorganise the social machinery and we will end up with a perfectly equitable and fair world, then almost any price would indeed be worth paying. <laughs>